everyone and welcome a really really warm welcome to the entrepreneurs marketing and wordpress community it's always wonderful to have you with us on our weekly lives and if you're watching on my profile then welcome and um, also on youtube if you're watching there too welcome and as always i encourage comments and feedback we love engagement and today is an incredibly special day because I have the incredible Dr. Shelley Hipsky with me. And I am just so excited to have Dr. Shelley spend um, her precious, busy, incredible schedule to put some time aside to talk to us. So um, we've just had the most amazing pre-live chat. So that's been super awesome. And I'm really looking forward to us being able to share um, all about Dr. Shelley with you today. So I'll give a little bit of an intro. Um, I don't really know where to start because it's such a long list. I'm sorry. <laughs> of amazing achievements that Thank you. we have here. So I'm just going to read them out because there's far too many to remember. Um, Yes, yeah, so here we go. So Dr. Shelley, she is a powerful entrepreneur and influencer, and you probably saw some of the promo graphics about the fierce woman, as the Huffington Post have coined Dr. Shelley, so that's pretty awesome. Dr. Shelley is the founder and editor-in-chief of Inspiring Lives magazine, which is the magazine for empowering women. Also, Dr. Shelley has hosted Inspiring Lives with Dr. Shelley on NBC, which is just amazing. Thank <laughs> you. <Yeah. everyone. laughs> it's a shortened version, by the way. <laughs> and also an internationally best-selling author of no less than 13 books, and the 13th one's just coming out, if I'm right. So that's it beautiful. is in July. We're so excited. <laughs> Yay. And... Um, Yes, Dr. Shelley's been featured on over 20 magazine covers and looks amazing on Thank you. <laughs> and has featured on all the major TV networks. So we are so, so privileged to have you join us today and welcome, an incredibly warm welcome to you, Dr. Shelley. Thank you so much. It's a delight for me to be here, Sharon. So um, as soon as we, so we have um, a comment. We'll, come through so I'm just like wonderful and display it so Erica Harrell has said oh hello Shelley. Erica Erica is one of the students in my empower you master class oh, wow. so I'm delighted to have her come and join us here today awesome. uh, she she's yeah. quite a, a powerhouse in her own right I, I think I have a feeling that, that there's going to be a lot of people popping on here that are just incredible ladies so let's let's awesome. get this party started yeah. <laughs> and Erica, if you want to give us a little bit of an intro or tell us something that you've been working on in the masterclass, then I'm sure we can display that too. So that will be fantastic. Welcome. So um, I have so many questions. Um, it's quite difficult to know where to start. But um, if we just go back a, way, a little way to when you were a professor, um, so you were a tenured professor and then you made this just huge trajectory to where you are today. So can you tell us a little bit about what you were a professor of and how you made that transition to successful CEO? Thank you. Yes, yeah, so I was a tenured professor at Robert Morris University. Um, and I had my undergrad and master's degree students were all future teachers. Uh, mm -hmm. My PhD students were instructional management and leadership. So they were leading businesses, they were leading nonprofits, and they were mm -hmm. leading school districts um, because my background really started off in education. I, I actually mm -hmm. have a, a huge heart for teaching. Um, there came a point about halfway through my 10 years at the university mm -hmm. that I um, was writing a book, one of my books, um, Ordinary People, Extraordinary Planet. Mm -hmm. And I had a conversation with a woman um, because the radio host, I was doing all these, these radio shows and the radio show host said that he had to re-record one of my book tour radio shows. Ooh. And at this time, I had been writing really academic books, Sharon. So 
Um, he said, before we re-record it, I'd like you to talk to this woman, Clarell. And I said, okay. She, he said, maybe she can help you with your book. Yeah. So I connected with Clarell. And when I connected with Clarell, she started to tell me this story um, about her life. And it was so inspirational that I actually dropped the phone. I put the phone down. I put it on speaker and I started typing like a mad woman. I was like, oh my God, the story is amazing. And the, the tears started going down my face. And I was just so wrapped up in this whole story. And when she was done telling me this story, I mm -hmm. said, you know, are there other people that have stories like this? And she said, absolutely. And, and you could be the one to tell it. And I what? said, oh, okay, I mean, maybe, maybe I should. So yeah. when I went back on to re-record, and this is going to hit a, 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 your heart because we just went through this, things, things that happen right before you go on air. <laughs> so right before we went on air with the show was Ordinary People Extraordinary mm -hmm. Planet. Yeah. We had this countdown and it was like three, two, one. And while he's counting it down, I said, Ray, has anyone written these stories of these incredible people down in a book? And he said, no. And I said, when you do, I should be the author and we're on. <laughs> so, <that's> <laughs> so I went through the interview, I did some other interviews. And then a week later in my email box, I get a YouTube video and it's yeah. this gentleman saying, Dr. Shelley Hipsky from Robert Morris University and this was on national television, by the way. He said on national television, Dr. Shelley Hibsky of Robert Morris University is going to write the book, Ordinary People, Extraordinary Planet. And I was like. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have a lot of choice off of that. <laughs> Absolutely not. I was like, oh crap, I better get ready. <laughs> So that so was a little spot. Yes, exactly. But oh, I, wow. I, I do it to myself. I do it to myself over and over again. Like I meet people and I'm like, oh, I like you. Let's work together. Let's make things happen. Let's change the world. And then we do. So <laughs> that's just a, sort of a blessing of, of my personality type, I guess, and and the the incredible, amazing people that keep getting attracted into my inner circle, which has just been phenomenal for me and for for them because we all really help support each other's missions and that's and that's what it's all about yes I, i've seen a lot of this coming through myself but there's definitely two types of people there's those that want to extinguish the light of others so that mm -hmm. they can shine brighter yes love them and then there's people who actually value the the gift of collaboration, inspiration, bouncing ideas, supporting one another. And I know which one and, and those categories that I would rather be, that's for sure. Yes. And that's, that's the network that I surround myself with too. Absolutely. Because I, is what makes the world go around at the end of the day. Totally. I mean, yeah. wait, why, why extinguish other people's lights when you can light another candle from it? I mean, exactly. you can always continue continue on the chain and really just make make a huge profound difference yeah exactly and yeah I mean I, I I'm gonna have to get that book and read some of these stories so with that yes that was the first book that you wrote that was um inspirational yes right. wow. yes and that was that was based on 13 um amazing people that had been interviewed on that radio show and then um after that i ended up having the television show inspiring life with dr shelley um then i went through a kind of tricky divorce i had a three-year-old and a five-year-old at the time mm. um and i was a full-time professor and i was doing tons of volunteer and charity work because that's always been on my heart as well mm -hmm. and I was just like how can I do this I can't be an executive producer on a, a show on NBC and be a teacher and do all this other stuff yes. um, so luckily the technology was catching up with us so I was able to do it as a podcast um, mm -hmm. empowering one radio and then that was taken from um, 120 different radio stations around the world and it was syndicated out to them. So mm -hmm. I was able to be heard all over the world. And then, then this mad rush of <laughs> yeah. ladies were coming to me. And, and it, at first it wasn't just women's stories, but then um, it just seemed to, to really resonate with women, the inspirational work that I was doing. I can well imagine. 
second one. Yeah. And then it's just like a snowball effect because you just keep attracting totally. more and more and hence this incredible trajectory and everything that you've done. It's just, Thank you. So I, I, one thing I'd love to know, what was it like the first time you appeared on TV? What was that like? <laughs> oh, wow, the first time, okay, so the first time I appeared on TV for my own TV talk show, mm -hmm. um, I had uh, Alicia Kozakevich. She was the, the first cyber predator kidnapping survivor. And oh. so, yes, she had this incredible powerful story and um she had already become like a, a little sister to me um so here i was on on the couch and just um looking into the prompter and had my producer in my ear and talking to her and um having the the audience you know watching us and um it felt like home. It felt like I was able to tell the stories that needed to be told and to really have a platform and ability to spotlight these stories. Mm -hmm. um, with Alicia, she was the perfect person to have on as my very first um, person on that television show um, because she not only had conquered this obstacle of being kidnapped, being traumatized, being for God's sakes, raped as a teenager and having it all over the news. I mean, she was on Oprah and everything else. Um, so having having such a traumatic story, but then she had also taken that um, after she had, was rescued by the, the FBI, she was able to take all of her information and knowledge about what that must be like to help the the. Um, the uh, missing missing children's um, bureau. I'm I'm not pronouncing that, that that particular organization correctly. I'm not stating that organization correctly. But she now goes around the world speaking and has literally changed laws to wow. help protect our children. Um, so, and it was amazing because that that moment to me, watching that unfold, I had always had this vision of these people and being able to tell their stories and so that was the first one on on television yeah. but wow. I've, I've interviewed over a thousand women now um around the world that have done these incredible things and it's yeah. just uh, my 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 staff all says i have my brain is like a rolodex <laughs> I've got everybody's information up here. <laughs> Must be very crowded. <laughs> it's noisy. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's interesting as you're talking about that because I guess it's the same worldwide, but I know in New Zealand we have these stories and they come up and someone shares something that's happened that's really awful and it's the news for a few seconds and then it's gone. And then you know that they're experiencing the fallout of that, an incredible high yes. of the anticipation. Mm -hmm. And then that crash of what next? What has that actually changed? So to have someone like you that can actually build momentum, wrap this person up and give them direction so that they can actually create meaning out of something so horrific is just heartwarming. Thank it really you. Is. We need more, more people like you. It's shame we can't clone you and have you in New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, you know, I am CEO. Maybe I can get my, my team to help make me clone. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be really handy. That would be very helpful for all of us. <laughs> now, I've got a couple of um, comments here. So I'll just pop them up before I ask you another question. Wonderful. I love this format. This is great. It is. It's cool, isn't it? It is. Um, so who do we have? So we have Shajil. I don't know if you know. Um, I don't know Shajil yet. I'd love to know where that. And hi. Hello. <laughs> and Shajil said hi to Erica. We have a little, <laughs> little dialogue going on in parallel, which is quite cool. Now, what have we got here? So Erica was just going. Yes, yeah, so Erica. Oh, yes. So, um, of course, so excited about what we're doing on the course. The group of women are awesome. And we've just finished your vision boards. Fantastic. Yes, our vi the vision boards have been wonderful. Um, we, we do mission statements and vision boards. And um, today I w was sharing a, a thank you letter to someone who inspired me. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I always encourage people to, to reach out in gratitude. In that yep. way, uh, to to you know, thank whoever has been there for you and supported you because yep. 
we never know how long we have on this earth. And um, the Cl Clarelle, the, the woman who I told you was the impetus for all this, um, from the television show to the radio show to the magazines um, mm -hmm. and, and the nonprofit, the Global Sisterhood was, um, <clears throat> was Clarelle and she actually passed away before uh, the book was completed. Oh. Um, but oh, that's so the beautiful th it is, but the beautiful thing was that she had a, a true message for the world and she was able to impart that to me and she had a message for her children. She was a single mom of three children and she transcribed uh, I transcribed for her the letters to her children that were written in my book and then were actually read at her memorial service um, mm -hmm. so that her children could know what was on her heart and, mm -hmm. and you know, how she viewed them and how much she loved them. And mm -hmm. um, it was, it was a really a beautiful process and it's incredible the amount of lives that she touched while she was here. And then, we've got the whole global sisterhood now that is sort of taking up the charge and, and helping to, to spread the good word and, and mm -hmm. help other women meet their mission. So it's been a really beautiful process. Yeah. And that, to leave that legacy is, it's something that few of us actually get to do. To Absolutely. It's is really beautiful, but very, very sad to hear. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't aware of that. Obviously, it doesn't quite filter through to the other side of the world in yes. quite the same way. But um, yes. wow, what an experience. So you moved, so you transitioned from tenured professor and then you started the, so, so I'm just trying to figure out the chronology. So while I was the tenured professor. <laughs> we have John Trout, I... people talking about your class as well. That's something I want to, to talk about at the end, but at the same time, I, I want to acknowledge the empowering class, class has really taken a life of its own. I mean, <laughs> the women in it are amazing. And if, if there's anyone watching this that's interested in talking to me about it more, I, I and Sharon, we're, we're definitely going to be talking about it more here um, as well as offline. <laughs> Looking forward to that. Um, but yes, yeah, so it was while I was about halfway through the career um, as a professor, um, and then it turned into the Empowering Women radio show, and then I took the top 100 stories from mm -hmm. there, and I created the Common Threads trilogy. So I found out, because I was seeking, I was trying to figure out how did women find inspiration, empowerment, and balance in their life? Um, and so I was able to take that information mm -hmm. and um, impart it to the world. And the cool thing was that with Common Threads, like it all went international bestseller on the same day because I had these mm -hmm. incredible women and their stories and they were all telling telling everybody, you know, you got to read this book because I gave tips, but wait do you hear this lady story. This is going <laughs> to blow you away. Yeah. This is going to take you to that next level. So... I went from there to that. Um, when the books were coming out, um, I was realizing that the the whole, as you said, trajectory of Inspiring Lives International, the company, was just going like this. And I was feeling a little boxed in with um, my, my little classroom and the rules and confinements and constraints. And I had a dream of really making the world my classroom. Um, I, I kind of foresaw that someday I could teach in a studio and mm -hmm. have it be like a TV show, but it's also a classroom. <laughs> and then I could meet a lady in my class for a Cosmo if I wanted to and sit there and have a Cosmo <laughs> and change her whole life. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> Pretty this awesome. So cool. Let's do it. <laughs> and therein became the the empower you. But I had to make that leap, and that was scary. It was really <laughs> scary making that leap. Um, from you know having a really great salary and you know the the health benefits and the just the stability and the respect. I mean, when you when you're a, a I worked my butt off to get tenure. I mean, I can well imagine. And especially a young and a woman. What was that? 
I can only begin to imagine to get it, to that level as a woman. It, exactly. Yeah. And and I was very, very young to to be hitting that that target goal. And I was actually told I wasn't going to hit it. And I was like, oh yes, I am. <laughs> this woman, <laughs> Dr. Shelley. <laughs> so I did hit the goal and then I just saw that there was this bigger picture and a whole world out there that needed education, entertainment, inspiration. Mm -hmm. And I I made that leap of faith and kind of never looked back. And then yeah. the cool part was that I ended up having this incredible team, um, a fabulous team of ladies um and then we created inspiring lives magazine and that has just been such a blessing too oh yeah just those oh just the cover photos are just stunning and thank just, you and just yeah a magazine just devoted to empowering women in, in a world I, I don't know what it's like in the u.s but in new zealand there is an, a huge disparity between what men achieve and what women can achieve um, yes yes anything that helps right that balance rocks in my book <laughs> <laughs> <Woman power. laughs> yeah, girl power all the way so um so the global sisterhood was a, a non-profit that you was that inspired by um sorry is her name corral did you Clarelle. say yes i would definitely Clarelle. say that she was a part of it back in the day um when i wrote common threads um when i was writing it now we can so, say it so many so many covers <laughs> It's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Getting camouflaged. <laughs> I'll just do one of these. It just looks uh, kind of like the ones behind. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, so it's amazing. So this it it says on here the global sisterhood of empowering women's success secrets. So that's um, really was um, it really started from these women. And there was a time when I was talking to um, a woman named Hannah out of Pakistan. Um, mm -hmm. And she had found me at the time I was a professor, I was, you know, I thought of myself as a teacher. And she had found me because she listened to an empowering women radio in rural Pakistan, like under Taliban rule, like, really like in the thick of it yeah. she listened to a radio show um that had hasina patel on it who is in south africa and she heard that i had been skyping in um sort of voluntarily to help work with these young teenage girls on mm -hmm. in their empowerment circles so she listened to that radio show wow. in pakistan of me interviewing a woman in south africa about the work i had been doing there talk about making the world your classroom and she came to me and we Skyped and she said, do you know what you're doing here, Shelly? And I said, no, what am I doing? <laughs> and she said, you're creating a global sisterhood. Um, and she, she hit the nail on the head when she said that because I had been treating these women that had come into my world and my inner circle as family. Mm -hmm. And we had all been doing that. And we look at each other as sisters and, and you know, how can I help my family? You, you know, my hashtag is family first. Yep. Absolutely. Um, and family <laughs> means everything to me. And so I was cre creating that. We were creating that. And then from there, it turned into a nonprofit here based <laughs> headquarters in the headquartered in the States, but we're helping women and children around the world. And it's just been so amazing and um if you want me to tell you some of the stories from that i could totally do that i'm not sure oh, oh by all means i'd love to hear <laughs> any, any inspiring story is just wonderful to hear so please do excellent so um we've got you know the facebook giving tuesday is next tuesday and so we're we're looking for for people to to donate and come on board with the global sisterhood with that um mm -hmm. because facebook do, does a double donation um okay. so i would love i would love to have a moment to talk you through that can you hear my son's great remote control car in the background sharon no <laughs> okay, <good. laughs> I'm afraid I can't. 
But I'm sensing it might be a little off-putting for you. <laughs> it's okay. I just thought maybe your audience was like, I wonder what no, that is. The audio is actually really good. So fantastic. Yeah. Good. Um, okay, you gotta help me out. Where were we? So um <laughs> <laughs> You were going this to is real me. deal. This is mompreneur in action live. <laughs> <laughs> so you were going to tell me about one of the inspiring stories. I would love to tell you about one of the inspiring stories. Okay, so let me tell you about Sister Zeph. Um, mm -hmm. She is with Zephaniah Free Education, and that is out of mm -hmm. Pakistan. Um, when I became friends with Sister Zeph, she had been teaching in the courtyard of her home for 20 years. Wow. Picture dirt floor, um, dirt ground, um, tents with, with holes in them made of basically sheets. And she's teaching curricula of, you know, kindergarten to 12th grade mm -hmm. and then women help, trying to help them become entrepreneurs. And it there was such a disparity um, between what they had and mm -hmm really what they had not um yeah. so and, and this is an area where there's child bride situations where women really aren't supposed to be educated yeah. um and sister zeph i mean there's an amazing documentary about her life um she really put her life on the line for 20 years and her family did as did as they did as well to teach these children and particularly the women um and girls mm -hmm. um and when she came to me, she became very naturally a part of the Global Sisterhood, and I wanted to help her. And she got one of the first international scholarships to um, the Empower You Masterclass that I teach so mm -hmm. that I could then teach her how to get the funds, get the resources, those type of things. Yeah, wow. And I'm so happy to report that now with with the help of the Global Sisterhood and some other incredible women organizations like Inspired Women and um, just the pooling of resources and funds. Um, mm -hmm. She now has a beautiful brick and mortar school there in Pakistan. Oh, yeah. She, I mean, the kiddos wear uniforms to school and they have healthy meals to eat to nourish their bodies and brains and they have textbooks and they have computers and they they skype to other places in the world to bring in the right teachers and um it's just it's amazing they now have a sewing center where the, the women are able to become entrepreneurs and they have um a hair salon where, where the women are taught how to um, have a trade of, you know, putting on the makeup and doing the hair. And um, it, it's just, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So Sister Zaf, if you're out there watching, God bless you, honey. You're doing a great job. And I'm so proud to have been able to, to mentor you through this. And wow. um, so that's just one of the stories of the Global Sisterhood. Um, and we've really done it all on a shoestring budget of, you know, events and um fundraisers and um those type of things but really yeah. it's it's the women in the sisterhood that say oh my gosh sister zeph needs help let's figure it out yeah. or it's, it, it's, 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 it's so amazing. awesome it's you know it's so it's funny because what what pops into my mind is for example when you're voting in a, a party politically and you have your one vote and you might think as as we probably all, it's crossed all our minds, that one vote isn't going to make any difference. Mm, and then yes. I have this, this lady talking to me, this one person, and I'm just thinking about all those lives that you've touched and all just that whole, that viral replication of that of that touch is quite incredible. Thank you so I'm much. To be able to, to know that you achieve that and touch so many lives is just phenomenal. Well, I think I think it was Margaret Mead that <laughs> <laughs> Margaret Mead said never doubt that a small group of thoughtful committed citizens can change the world, but it's the only thing that ever has. And so I truly believe that that small committed group of citizens that mm -hmm. is in the global sisterhood is really here to make a profound difference in mm -hmm. in our sometimes damaged, sometimes upside down world. Um, and who better than, you know, the, the mothers and the nurturers and the, the women of the world to rise up together 
in a sisterhood and, and yeah. help make the change. I love it. I really love it. And I'm going to ask a very banal question now that I've, I was going to ask you pre-live and didn't, but there's Can some we? lectures where, where we have president of the not-profit 501, bracket C, close bracket, bracket C, close bracket, the global system. I'm just dying to know. Is that a legal requirement that you put that there? Yes. <laughs> How funny! Wow. Yes, yes. In America, if you if you just say you're a nonprofit, it's one thing. But tax wise, IRS wise, everything like that wise, yeah. um, people need to know that it's a five hundred one c three nonprofit public Ooh. charity. <laughs> we're That's legit. So I mean, we're at, again polar opposites because in New Zealand, we're prob probably one of the least legislated countries. Okay. We're always okay. the last okay. to introduce legislation. So it's just oh my goodness! <laughs> yes, yeah, we're we got yeah. we got to make sure we're all on the up and up, and and everybody knows our business. Even <laughs> dot the eyes. That's just wonderful. Um, so how do you balance everything that you do? And I have inspiring lives international. You're keynoting internationally. You're president of the Global Sisterhood Not Profit Five Hundred One. <laughs> and you're finishing your 13th book and yes. your your hashtag is family first how do you do it <laughs> how do i say is it when people say all that it sounds really daunting but you know what if you take it one day at a time and you i really focus in on my passion mm -hmm. um and and i streamlined my life i mean you gotta remember i was having to be physically in a classroom mm -hmm. for so many hours of a day, having strict office office hours in the, the university. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't have that now. I have, I have a little bit more flexibility of time and space and where I need to be. And I can be where, where my heart says I'm supposed to be mm -hmm. um, to, you know, today and yesterday, I, my heart said I needed to be there for my kids. Um, one of my kiddos was sick and, um, I, I knew that I needed to be home. So mm -hmm. here I am in my home office. I can chat with you. Um, mm -hmm. but I, I could be the one to make the soup for my, my girl. And, and I could be the one to, you know, to, to take care of the homework with my kiddos and, yeah. um, those, those type of things. Um, and I can schedule in when they're at school, when they're not sick, I can schedule in a little downtime for myself. I'm, I'm still learning. None of us are perfect. Um, easy, is it? <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I know that my, my staff, if they see this, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, well, she never sleeps. I, I hear that all the time. Because <laughs> they get like these emails in the middle of the night. So that that is something that I either have going for me or against me. Um, so, but definitely I, I, really strive to just keep my family first and and walk in my passion and purpose mm -hmm. um and i think that that helps me to create that that balance yeah that's awesome and you you do yoga do you i saw oh around. yes i love yoga and yeah. i love pilates um and i also when i i was at one point in my life very overweight um and when i was overweight i'm such a goal setter that I set a goal to um, not only lose the 65 pounds that I needed to lose, but I set it that I, I would uh, become certified in kickboxing. So <laughs> I can kickbox like nobody's been. <laughs> what belt are you? <laughs> I, there's not belts in this form of kickboxing, oh, okay. um, but I have been in the ring with, with some guys actually, and yes. been able to, you know, a little bob and weave action. I got it. I, <laughs> it's worth having because I used to do kickboxing as well. Did back, you? Back in the day, I got up to um, a brown belt. Oh, so they had belts there. Okay, cool. Yeah, is it, I guess it's different. Um, this was in, I sometimes have to think what country was I in because I've been in New Zealand for like 14 years. So it's half, you know, it's such a, yes. a big part of my life, but that was the UK. <laughs> a long That's time awesome. ago. Yeah. Um, That's so cool. So we need to get in the ring together. 
I think I'm a little bit out of practice now, but that's, that's okay. Can you come to Pittsburgh and in the States and uh, we'll, we'll hit the ring. I'll, I'll bring here. We'll <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I remember for my, I think it was my purple belt, they put me in the ring with two guys. I honestly wow. thought I was going to die. It was oh just, my gosh, yeah. It's fitness wise, it's phenomenal. It oh, yeah. So the only thing is, my coach was always like, would you, Shelly, would you stop? Because I'd be like, you can't bruise me because I have a red carpet event. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. It's like you're oh. the only one that says that, Shelly. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also, I'm also a yoga fan. My oh. husband and I do yoga every night once the kids are in bed. That's Mine only awesome. 10, 15 minutes in front of the TV, but we always oh. do yoga because it's so good. It's, it is. It's so good to get back in your body, in your mind, have everything connected and just zone everything else out. I love it. Totally. Have you tried Pilates with the Reformer? I love that. I have. I only did Pilates once, and maybe okay. it was probably the class, and I didn't. It, it didn't resonate for me at that time, but I, it probably would now, and I should probably yes. try it. Yeah, I think going back and trying new things is a good idea. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Now I'm going to have a look at my list again and see what other okay. questions I have for I you. I love this. I, I feel like I'm like on a, a buzzer show, like <laughs> you're like looking up to the big board. <laughs> I have a feeling that um my comments are not all coming through. That's the one thing about the streaming that yeah, they haven't. There isn't a live stream platform that works 100% yet, and the Facebook right. next one doesn't. So I suspect that there'll be a lot that will come through afterwards. So and um, totally okay. put hash live or put hash replay, um so we know. And any questions or comments either I or Dr. Shelley, if she can put it in a schedule, will answer you or I will I will message her and we'll, we'll get the answers to you. We will get the answers, absolutely. And I'll also be repurposing this and it will go on my podcast and wonderful elsewhere as well. So um, you're going to see a lot more of us in the I love it. <laughs> now, what do I have here? Um I think I know the answer to that question. Why Inspiring Lives magazine is considered to be the magazine for empowering women. I, I think I, unless there's any more that you want to add. Well, I want, I want to flip the table. <laughs> <laughs> Sharon Henderson, why do you think that Inspiring Lives magazine is the magazine for empowering women? <laughs> well, given who's behind it all and how many lives you've touched, and what you're doing with the Empower You Masterclass, I think that all of that, all of that mindset, those goals, um, just everything is encapsulated in the magazine and your features. So that would be my answer in a nutshell. But please I like do. It. I, please I, 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 I think you're a perfect spokesperson for us, Sharon. <laughs> I want a signed copy, if I may. Absolutely, be, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So, and we've got the, the so the reason I feel, I, I think you really hit the nail on the head. I'm kind of looking at, at Inspiring Lives magazine and, you know, it's a, a full color, glossy magazine. And here we've got Oprah Winfrey and Nicole Kidman and, and, and all those stars, but also Shonda Rhimes, but but also it's it's the women that you might not necessarily know and deserve a spotlight. Um, let's see if I can look back here behind me. Um, this is a face that a lot of people know, but they maybe didn't know their name before. Um, th this is Eileen Gruba. She is just an amazing actress. Um, oh, she's been yes, I see but, yes, yes, yes. So yes. she was just on um, New Amsterdam. She's been on Sons of Anarchy. She's been on so many different shows, and it's it's. She's got this beautiful face. But um, before we did, this is actually the that issue. Um, before we did the Inspiring Lives cover, while we were doing it, and she was all glammed up. She said, "Nobody ever gets me glammed up for these things." She has been in Hollywood and been in, in and a New York actress and a Hollywood actress for years and decades. But because she has um, a physical disability, she has a limp. Um, and so because of that, she said, she said, Shelly, they always cast me as 
um, drug addicts or hookers. And I was like, well, we need to change that because yeah. you are so beyond those two titles and that's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so we were actually able to, you know, show the world how stunningly beautiful she is inside and out and tell her story and tell her journey. And now she is just skyrocketing, absolutely skyrocketing. I wanted to see if I could find one of these amazing pictures but um and was that because she was featured in um inspiring lives magazine or is this no i mean she she's such a talent but i think that that she 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 actually took this magazine and was able to put it on the desks of casting agents and and people while she was doing auditions and um really just take her look and vibe up a notch so they could see her in a different way. It's just like doing a vision board. Um, if you can't see the vision for yourself and other people can't see you in that light, mm -hmm. how in the world are you ever gonna get there? Exactly. It's so, so that's, yeah, it's what, what you're emanating from within. I'm, I'm a firm believer in the energy and the aura that you put out into the world. So believe absolutely. It. It's, absolutely. It's it's all about that that vibration and just get it, getting on that same plane with other people. And if you're not there, they're not going to see you. But once you're there, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, I want a part of that. I want to <laughs> help that person. I want to soar with them. Um, so it's it's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. That Thank is you. a great addition to what I'd already said. That's for sure. Wow. Thank you. Magazine. Fantastic. So, um, in terms of, so you, you had your company and then you became a brand that was completely separate from your company. Do you tell yes. us how you made that um, transition and yes. how women can do the same? That's a great question. And it's a lot of what I address in my 13th book that comes out in July. Um, that, that the book is called Ball Gowns to Yoga Pants entrepreneurial secrets for creating your dream business and brand. And um, I think I, I kind of have a big personality if you haven't noticed. No. <laughs> no. So that definitely helped with becoming a brand of like uh -huh. who I am. And um, very naturally, because I had my doctorate, uh, people started calling me Dr. Shelley. Um, and, and so that, that helped with the branding. And then I love, mm -hmm. I love the color red. Um, so that came along with it. And then the, yeah. the ladies, you know, that, that all became a part of the brand. Um, mm -hmm. these incredible ladies that are part of my, my tribe and my sisterhood. Um, yeah. so I was able to do that very naturally. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that if you're out there and you're trying to create a brand, the very first thing, very first thing you need to do is be true to yourself yeah. and establish who you authentically are. Because mm -hmm. if, if I was trying to be somebody that I wasn't, mm -hmm. it, it wouldn't connect. I wouldn't be resonating with the right people. The yep. right people wouldn't be coming into my world and into my business and becoming my clients, becoming mm -hmm. my dear friends. Um, and the whole ball gowns to yoga pants is because my daughter said to me, mom, like you used to wear suits to work all the time. Now you're either like all glammed up with your hair all <laughs> done and your lashes like... <laughs> <laughs> and your Christian Louboutin shoes and your fancy gowns um, in your ball gowns or you're in yoga pants and you're running around after us and, you know, taking a call, business call on the run in your in your sneakers and your hoodie and your yoga pants. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I was all I've, I've been very authentic to that. And I everything from how I am in the magazine to how I am on television when I'm mm -hmm. on, you know, when I'm in Hollywood and I'm doing the TV talk shows, or if I'm, you know, writing a post, like a very authentic, honest post mm -hmm. saying, you know, you know, it was a crap day and it was hard to be a mompreneur today. And my, mm -hmm. my, you know, this is happening in my world, but mm -hmm. damn, am I blessed. <laughs> You know, like, um, that, like authenticity. absolutely, women will resonate with that. Yes, yes, because, like, sorry, go ahead. 
Oh no, I was I was just thinking about my own preteen and the attitude and the whole mm. because that's what they're seeing on TV. Yes. And when you have women like yourself that are so amazing and authentic and can have a photo on Facebook without makeup and still look stunning, by the way. But <laughs> you. <laughs> you know that, and, and particularly for your own children, to be able to see this mum who can be so glammed up and yet is so real, that gives Thank so you. much depth to how kids are perceiving the world in front of them and takes away all that worry about and that focus on what's so superficial in, yeah. in reality and so that is inspiring and wonderful and I can't think of a better message to be giving your daughter than that and oh, then into thank you. that wonderful title for the book which yes is, yes <laughs> it really, doesn't it it really draws you in <laughs> it, 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 thank you it, it and it's just been such a joy just writing it well actually it was really hard to write if I if I could be honest I mean people think that um Christy Page just said authenticity is integral for achieving our vision absolutely yeah, yeah. If, if you aren't authentic if you aren't real um it's just, it's not going, you're not going to get there. You're not going to get to what you dream of. Uh, people will see through it. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. You're not, you, you have to, you have to be real. Um, so yes, it, this, this whole journey has just been so, such a blessing. It's so, so exciting to be able to put it out there. And, and I appreciate what you said about um, the young women, um, just because the next generation of the global sisterhood has always been on my heart as well. And how can we reach them and how can, mm -hmm. um, we afford for, you know, make opportunities so that they can be giving back. And we actually have a next generation global ambassador, um, Sammy Roth, and she's, she's just dynamic. Um, so it's, it's wonderful to, to see this next generation kind of coming up together and and leading each other together and volunteering and putting their heart and soul into what they're doing so i i think we're, we're going to be leaving the next generation in good hands and with our so. legacy yeah the, and just the environmental conscientiousness that's coming through with the next generation yes. too is fabulous in a world that is so obsessed with materialistic things to, yes. to have that coming through is really heartwarming i think we are going full circle and it's yeah totally it's brilliant. Yeah. it is it's exciting it's very it's exciting exciting. <laughs> it's very exciting um so we've, we've already touched on the book the 13th book um yes. can you can you tell us a little bit about it at this stage absolutely <laughs> so Hello. It's jam packed with success secrets. Um, and like I, I started to say was that it was, it was hard to write because I wrote, I sat down and I wrote a book for my publisher. Mm -hmm. Um, Christy, I totally agree. There's definitely a lot of hope with our young people. I love it now that I'm seeing some come up. Um, yes. So people coming, please do. We're loving it. It's yes, right. absolutely. As always, a all you well, that's the word spreads. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we have so, another one. This is not oh, how the train of thought. Oh, <laughs> they're so uninhibited. Now. Is it, I love this because we can just kind of go off topic and just kind of roll with it. The best thing is that they're so uninhibited in everything. Yes, they definitely are. That is, that's awesome that they can. It is. And, and that's the thing. I mean, I just, I love watching my kids. Um, because what what you see is how you're packaged when you when you pop out into this world before we have all those societal expectations and norms and kids are uninhibited and they're honest yes. and they'll say things that as an adult you go oh my goodness but we need to be great <laughs> absolutely absolutely they they're very very much themselves and and <laughs> that's a it's a beautiful thing so you asked me about my books I did. Um, so there's there's 10 secrets to success that I came up with. Um, and what I was trying to say was originally I wrote the book and Sharon, I scrapped it. I read through this entire book and the 13th book I had written. And it had taken me about two years to write the book, the, oh the original goodness. 13th book. And I read it and I was like, 
oh no, this is not the right book. This is not the book that I needed when I was starting a business. Um, and so I trashed it, which was a little hard. It was a little like, oh God. Is there something you could, you could repurpose at another, mm -mm. no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, it wasn't right. It wasn't right. It wasn't what my readers needed but this is <laughs> this is so what my readers like anybody that's ever needed to write uh, that ever wanted to start a business or mm -hmm. figure out how to build a personal brand or a business brand like this is the book um because it's got my stories woven together with the stories of how everybody from sarah blakely to um with Spanx to uh i mean so, so many of the the top top women entrepreneurs that have created multi-million dollar companies. Um, she said I would have cried. I, okay, so maybe I shed a few tears for the book. <laughs> but I knew there was the better book inside of me and that's all goes to yoga pants. <laughs> oh, so, wow. it does. It, but it also, it has my teaching style with it. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was, I was declared, um, not only entrepreneur of the year, but I was also back in the day considered a super professor, one of the best professors in the world, which sounds so highfalutin, but it's a title that I earned. And um, then you and one that you should definitely share then. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. It's just sometimes it feels like contrived to say those things. Um, no, but I, I absolutely love teaching and I love the inquiry method. I love putting those questions out there so that mm -hmm. other people can answer it for themselves. So yeah. it's set up with these success secrets, each, each chapter is a different success secret. Mm -hmm. It weaves in stories of how I made it happen for my own successful career. But then it tells you about these other amazing people and their careers. And then it really makes you think, <laughs> and you're going to wow. sit down with your pen and you're going to start filling out these questions and you're going to create a dynamic, incredible brand that represents who you are. And wow. you put it out into the world. When you're done with this book, you're going to be able to take it and say, hot damn, I got a business. <laughs> I cannot wait. I, I cannot wait. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to be awesome. I, I can't wait for the world to, to, to get it. And I, I can't believe I have to wait till July to birth this puppy, but oh, that's a long time. <laughs> it is, it feels like a long time, but I, I know that Morgan James is the, the entrepreneur's publisher and, and they're, they're, they're working their magic on their mm -hmm. end so that it's just the right book. Yeah. You, yeah. You've got to get that process right. Um, even, even when Absolutely. we do want to things, sometimes it, it's just worth taking the time. When you, so how long did the rewrite take you, the new book? Oh, it was a, it was, so it was a year. So it was a three-year process of writing this 13th when? book. So when? I've been writing a long time. I'm really a vampire. No, I'm just <laughs> And so when do you write? Do you write? Do you have a I write at night. I just told you I'm a vampire, Sharon. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't. It did connect. <laughs> nocturnal, that's the one. I am totally nocturnal. Yes. Yeah, so, like, most of my books were written in um, like all night diners back in the day when I didn't have kids. I would stay at all night diners <laughs> and type away on my laptop. Um, and then when I had kids, it was nap times or bedtimes. So once they go to sleep, I start writing and I write and write and write and create. And I, I love the process. I really do. Um, some of my more fun times were when of uh, writing were in um, when I was in Paris writing this one. Um, I was able to write in little Parisian cafes and oh. um, how it was delightful. Oh, she, yay! She said the ten secrets seem doable. I can't wait to hear about them. I can't wait for you to read it, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> and then I get a countdown timer, aren't we? Yay! <laughs> totally. And then and then I get to hear all these successful businesses, and I get to go to your businesses and buy from you. It's yes. awesome. Win win, it's, isn't it? <laughs> totally, totally. I I love. So many of the women that have been in my world have created these businesses and nonprofits and brands and watching them soar just lights my heart up. It makes me so happy inside. Oh, so I, I must be amazing. It really must. It, it is. It's exciting. Able to do what 
to do to be able to do what really makes you want to just jump out of bed in the morning and yeah. to be able to do that. There's so many people in the world who that is just not a, not um, something that they could even conceive of. So yeah. to be able to do something that drives you and excites you like that is just a gift. And I, I think Absolutely. that we all have the ability to do what really motivates us. It's just that mindset, isn't it? It really is. It really is. Oh, my gosh. Christy, so I bet you have, like, a higher education. She said, are there any secrets that surprise you? When I was on doctoral committees, that was always the question. <laughs> <laughs> what surprised you when you were doing this dissertation? <laughs> I think really, I mean, what surprised me wasn't necessarily the secrets because once I started really delving into that, they just started to really form. It, what surprised me was that I didn't get it right out of the gate. Like, I feel like, you know, it's my 13th book. I should have known, but I'm so glad that, that I set ego aside and, and said, okay, I got to do a rewrite okay it maybe it's not a rewrite maybe i really have to <laughs> that's a huge huge thing that that sinking yeah. feeling that that process of actually coming to a place of acceptance of yeah my publisher couldn't believe it my 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 readers couldn't believe it they're like what <laughs> yeah because like i i put it out there on social i'm done <laughs> I, I, i've written my book and then I, I just, I, you, but you really have to be real, as real with yourself as with your, your clients and your, your people that are following you and those type of things and, and really get in there and say, is this the best I can do? Is this what the world needs? And if it's not, you're not doing a service. But that's amazing. To, I mean, if that voice was after two years of writing, if, if I could hear that little voice, I'd want to drown it out. <laughs> oh, <I'm... laughs> wow. I mean, that, that's just a testament to, yeah, just to your standards, to your dedication, to your followers. And that's good. Thank awesome. you. Well, I'm a servant leader at heart. Like, I, I'm here to serve. I'm here to serve the women of the world. Like, I love the women of the world and I want to help them. And it would do no service if mm. I put out there anything yeah. that, that was, wasn't less than stellar. So I, I just got to do what I got to do. <laughs> you did it. And Thank it's done. And Yay. <laughs> so I have one more question left. And Absolutely. That, is, that is um about... Um, your signature course, which is Empower You, the masterclass. Yes. Tell us about that. Oh, I love I know Empower You. I you all about it. Oh, it, it has been so amazing to teach the Empower You masterclass. Um, I live, sleep, eat, breathe, adore teaching, and particularly these women, most of them are female entrepreneurs. Many of them are mompreneurs, business owners, not nonprofit owners, mm -hmm. um, or they intend to be. And I have really created this curricula um, based upon, it's, okay, I'm little, another little braggart thing, but. <laughs> sorry. That's, that's one, what we want to hear. One of the other things that I have is a U.S. patent. Um, on a curriculum that I created with Dr. Janine Blackburn, and it is how to teach adults, adult learners, um, mm -hmm. according to their learning styles. So I really am able to get in there and help people learn the way that they best learn. Um, wow. So I take that whole curricula that I created um, about how to how to brand yourself, how to create a vision, how to create a mission, how to um, take yourself to that next level, um, mm -hmm. and provide a network of these incredible women. Women, we're going into in January. We're going into our fourth cohort of these groups of women that have taken this class together, and so we all come together. Um, through Facebook technology, and we're mm -hmm. able to not only lift each other up, but support each other. And we know each other's visions. We know each other's mission. We know where we want to go. Mm -hmm. And then somebody else in the class will say, 
oh my gosh, I know how to do that. Or I know so-and-so and and I want to introduce you to so-and-so. And then, oh, or why don't we go ahead and I could take this part of the nonprofit. You could take this part of the nonprofit because you're really good at this. I'm really good at that. And then just magic happens. So it's, it's been so awesome. I, I just love watching the whole process and how they're just transforming their own lives and, and doing it with the help of empower you. That is incredible. So um, the, the patent, how did, how did you come up with this, um, this formula for how to reach people in, in different ways, according to presumably their life, their um, learning styles? So we could go back. I'm looking around my office, <laughs> see if I can find the book. Um, back in my academic days as a, um, a scholar and researcher, um, I wrote a book on differentiated instruction for the classroom uh, for Pearson, which is the world's biggest textbook company. Um, and oh, that. I've heard of Pearson. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> just name drop celebrity names. I'm like, uh, Pearson, <laughs> yes, Batten. <laughs> I'm <Bindi. laughs> Oh, funny. So, anyways, <laughs> I digress. Um, so I, I wrote the book, on, literally wrote the book on how to differentiate instruction for the classroom for younger mm-hmm. students, for K through 12. And then my doctoral student, um, Dr. Janine Blackburn, who was Janine Blackburn before we we got her through the dissertation process and everything, um, she was working on a whole process to work with adult learners. And I said, oh my gosh, what if we took what has already been developed by other Mm -hmm. scholars and we matched it for adult learners? And she at the time Mm -hmm. was working for GlaxoSmith & Klein, which is a huge obviously a huge um, Fortune 500 company. Um, And she was training all the trainers at the adult level. So we took the concepts behind, uh, this is so fun to be able to talk about scholarship with you. (laughs) Oh, it's fascinating. (laughs) I never get to do this on talk shows. It's usually like, ooh, look at my shoes. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's so funny. (laughs) Very young, please do. Oh, so, anyway, so we took this very scholarly concept and we, we took it and we took it and made it for the adult learner and it had never been in that space before. And um, then we got the US patent and then wow, I made the world my classroom. I took all that yeah. concept and um, boiled it down for how to transform your life and find inspiration, empowerment, and balance and abundance. Mm-hmm. And bam, mm-hmm. Empower You was born. Amazing. Because I... I- I've done patent law because um, I mentioned to you in our yes. previous that I was a, a commercial litigator and in amongst all of that, I did some patent work and I know the process is not an easy one. So right. it must be novel what we create. Yes, to get yes it definitely law. is. It definitely is. Um, and it's just, it's so, it's so much fun to just delve in there and, and really yeah. get to the heart of it. And I, Oh, I think we may have frozen. Am I back? You're you're back. You are. Okay. You froze a little bit. Oh, back on this. <laughs> Very hot here as well. I'm be, I love it. to be hotter. <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying because to remember. Because, <laughs> yeah, I think it's starting to wrap up the show. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking about patents. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> we were so scholarly oh. just a few minutes ago. We were, we were very. You were the lawyer. I was the professor. We were. <laughs> We were fancy, remember? And now we can't stop giggling. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Okay, put on your serious face. I will try. There's there's a delay now (laughs) between (laughs) the 
visual, so I'm not sure how much longer. Maybe maybe my laptop's about to explode in the heat. <laughs> well, I I hope I didn't cause your laptop to explode. Maybe we should maybe we should wrap up the show and I think that might to be us. <laughs> Well, oh, I just want to thank you so much. It has been so much fun and we, yeah, inspiring. I'm so excited about All Gowns to Yoga Pants when that comes out. And if anybody is interested in the Empower You Masterclass, there's not many um, people running courses nowadays that have a patient to <laughs> <laughs> So that alone is a um, pretty good reason to um, inquire about the, the course. It sounds amazing and I'm going to be definitely um, finding out more about it. If you do have any questions, particularly about the, the masterclass, then just leave us um, a message either in the group or in relation to this um, video and we will do our best to answer. I'll just very quickly see, oh, I think, I had a question from Kirsty. We'll just see if, if the technology and the computer will hold out just a moment longer. Ooh, so, Kirstie, yes. She says, I'm an artist. Have you had any other creatives take part in your training? Absolutely. Oh my gosh, we have so many artists right now, currently. Yeah. Um, everyone from visual artists to um, vocal artists. Uh, I'm I'm a vocal singer as well. Um, no way. Yes, yes. <laughs> wow. uh, <laughs> um, and so I, I have a deep affinity for people that are creatives. I love creatives. I consider myself to be a creative. Um, and I, I think that it's so important to find your tribe. And I would welcome, Christy, for you to connect with me um, through LinkedIn or Facebook or um inspiringlivesmagazine.com is another way to connect with me um, and see some of the incredible ladies that are in that and um I, I can't wait to, to see what happens with all of these incredible people that are in your tribe and come on over and we'll, we'll create a whole global sisterhood together yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> and um just some final comments <laughs> <laughs> And fine. Thank you. Jeez, <laughs> the best giggles. It's been uh thank you. Thank you to everybody who has commented. Um the live wouldn't be um as special as it is without the engagement and the comments and the questions and the support. So thank you to everybody. And um, a huge thank you, Shelley. It's been fantastic. And we'll have to do it again sometime. It's been so much Absolutely. And you'll have to come to the States and we'll have to hang out. And <laughs> definitely love to do that. All right. Thank Wonderful. you so, so much. I will um, end this now, but I will, um, I'm actually not sure what I'm going to do the next live. I'm actually moving towards a podcast. So I'm oh, okay. launching my podcast. So I think I have a couple more guest speakers, but we don't have any time scheduled in yet for live. So I will keep everybody posted on that. But I think next week I'm going to take um, a little break. So it might be the week. Good idea. But I will keep everybody posted. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of the week. And we will see you all soon. Bye. Bye-bye.